Greetings, everyone. Welcome to today's 30 Day Growth Challenge Devotional. My name is Maurice Woods, and I'm one of your favorite disciples here at the Wayward Outreach Church, and I'm super excited to go over James chapter 3, verses 13 and 16. Now, quickly, as a recap, you guys heard the word. If you didn't hear it yesterday, you need to go back over that word powerful. I'm talking about powerful. So powerful, I don't even got to expound upon it. I'm just going to read a couple verses from the devotional yesterday. James 3, 6 said, And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire, it is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, all kinds of birds and reptiles and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. <laughs> this is something that we most definitely need the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God himself to give us the ability to overcome utilizing our mouth for evil or as a poison or as a fire to burn things up in our lives or the lives of others so that we can use our mouths as a blessing. So moving forward today, uh, let's jump right into it, guys. We have verse 13 and we're going to dissect this word just a little bit at a time. And I'm looking forward to all that God is going to reveal to us even in this moment as I get to share. Verse 13. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. Now, the word humility is a lack of pride, meekness. The word humility means controlled strength. Also, when we look at the word wisdom, let's look at a couple verses in the scriptures to define what wisdom looks like according to God. Verse 11, uh, or actually Proverbs 11, chapter uh, 11, verse 30 says, the fruit, of righteous, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. Soul winning lines up with being wise, being kingdom-minded, being mindful of our life and how we have the influence to share the good news to lead individuals to freedom from bondage, from darkness to light. It says that these individuals are wise. It also says in Proverbs 9, 10, that the fear of the Lord, which is the reverence or the respect or the honor of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. So now let's look at this verse again. So it's saying that God is making it clear for us that if you are wise, if it's conditional and understanding God's ways, if this is something that we have lined up in our lives, we could prove it by living an honorable life. Now, what does it mean to live an honorable life, Maurice? I'm glad you asked because the scripture explains it right here. It means doing good works, but not just any good works because many people do good works, but it says do good works with humility that comes from wisdom. So when we think about wisdom and I'm thinking about respecting the Lord, honoring the Lord, when I'm doing good deeds, when I'm doing good works and I'm doing it from a place of I'm looking for to win a soul over for the kingdom, that will lead us to be humble. So those good works that we do will lead us to be humble because we're mindful of what we're actually doing. It's unto God that we're doing it. And he says that this is an honorable life. This is something that's pleasing to God. And you might say, you know what, Maurice, I'm not really living an honorable life. Like I, I, I'm not really operating in humility and, and I don't see this wisdom going forth from my life. Well, no worries. Look what the word says right here. There's an answer for that. It says, if you are wise, maybe you may not be wise enough. Maybe you may not understand God's ways. Maybe you're just like me. My wisdom is not good enough. My understanding is not good enough. So I see here in this scripture, not only a course of instruction to direct me in the right way, but also reminding me that, hey, this is the reason why you're not living an honorable life. All those years in prison, all those years in bondage, breaking relationships, just not really being accountable or being an asset to my family or my community. The result of that was I truly wasn't wise and I didn't understand God's ways. But God is saying that you have the power and the authority through him by being wise, being kingdom minded, being a soul winner, doing our works, doing the things that we do in life with the respect and a reverence to God, honoring God. It will give us the ability to live our life in a way that is honorable, proving that we do understand God's ways, that we do have a place of wisdom that we're operating from. So moving forward, verse 14. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't 
cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Verse 15, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. So jealousy and selfishness, what does this mean? Well, before we even break it down by the definition, we see that it says that these are not God's kind of wisdoms. Sounds like man's kind of wisdom, right? Sounds like the world's kind of wisdom. Sounds like a type of wisdom that is earthly, lowest level of wisdom, right? It's unspiritual and even demonic, the verse says. And when I think of demonic, I think of instead of Holy Spirit, all powerful, all knowing, the comforter, the counselor, right? I'm thinking of dark spirits, demonic spirits, meaning the enemy. And so where there's jealousy, meaning by definition resentfulness, where there's spitefulness, where there's greed, suspicion, insecurities, that's what jealousy is, where those things are, where there's selfishness, meaning where there's self-seeking or inconsideration, right? Or even insensitive behavior, where those things are, it gives realm and legal opportunity for the demonic. The enemy cannot resist those type of behaviors. He loves coming in and dwelling into that type of behavior. Verse 16 says, for wherever there is jealousy, so wherever there is resentfulness, wherever there is spitefulness or greed, suspicion, wherever there's insecurities and selfish ambition, so wherever there's inconsideration, wherever there's um, insensitivity, right? It says, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. So when there's disorder going on, when there's evil happening, right, you most likely can result back to jealousy and ambition being a part of an individual's life. It might be for us personally, it could be for other individuals. But regardless of who it's operating through, this is the result of us not being able to live an honorable life, a life of wisdom unto God. And this is a key for us, family. I love the word of God because these words to me are commandments. These words to me are promises that God is desiring to flow through our lives. So when we go back up to verse 13, and, and before we go to 13, we see that the word is saying clearly that the enemy cannot resist the jealousy and a self amb selfish ambition, right? He comes in, it's demonic. It gives legal access to the enemy and our lives in this area, right? But instead, when we go back to verse 13 and we say, you know what, maybe I'm not wise enough. No, 100%, I am not wise enough apart from God. And I don't have the understanding of God's ways. But I declare that because your word says that I can prove that I do have the understanding of your way and I am a wise individual, I'm gonna do it through your strength by living an honorable life. And what's an honorable life look like? It looks like me doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom, right? So the works that I'm gonna do, they're gonna pertain to me having a mindset of winning souls because one who wins souls is wise. It's going to come from a place of me having honor, right, and respect and reverence for God because the beginning of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Just the beginning, the beginning of wisdom, just the first level is respect and reverence for God. And so I get to do this through God because this is what his word says I can do. And so family, there's so much to unpack here. Um, I get super excited about the word of God as it just gives me life right now. Just speaking to myself, as I'm speaking to you, I'm talking to me, this applies to me. And I'm super grateful for this time. James chapter three, verse 13 to 16. I hope you enjoyed this time with me today, you guys. And as you can see, this passage provides us with some incredible, important foundational truths about our faith. Truths that have not only transformed my life and helped me become the man of God that I am today, but truths that are helping me move forward in this very moment because I still need God's instructions. I still need his direction to make the right decisions, to live an honorable life, a life of wisdom and understanding, a life of truth that is pleasurable and honorable for him. And so before I let you guys go today, do me a favor. If anything stood out to you in this, this portion of reading, if uh, any inspiration came about, or you just want to share some feedback that you received through this, go ahead and give us a comment on the bottom of this, uh, in the comment section. And you can also like and subscribe to this page. If you came across it and you're not a subscriber, please share this with a friend and let's get this word of God out so that we continue to grow and have an honorable life that's pleasing unto the Lord. I want to take the time to just pray and thank the Father for this time that we had together in devotion. Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this time to dig into your word. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for your word that gives us the ability to understand what it is you desire for us to operate in, how you desire for us to live our lives. 
but you also make it clear that this is exactly how you desire to live through us. Because it's not by our might or our power, but it's by your spirit, by your power that flows through us that we get to live an honorable life, doing good works from a place of humility and wisdom, Father. We love you, and I declare and decree that your love and your goodness will continue to pour out into all of those under the sound of my voice who are witnessing, Father God, your word being spoken today. And may we all receive this in our hearts so that we can live an honorable life under you, Father, in wisdom and cancel out the works of jealousy, cancel out the works of the enemy and his selfishness and give no permission to the demonic realm. Father, we give you glory for this power and this authority that we have in you. And we bless you and we thank you for your word that we freely get to have here today in Jesus name. God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for tomorrow's devotion. We're going to actually be going over James chapter three, verse 17 and 18. So don't miss out. God bless.